Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about dripping content if you are not going to be upgrading to the S2 Member Pro plugin. Now S2 Member obviously has a paid version. Now S2 Member obviously has a paid version and that paid version comes with the ability for you to be able to drip or to be able to time release content. Now that may not be an option or, or that may not be something that you like to do. So we're going to be talking about a workaround in this video. Now, one of the things you're going to want to consider doing is to discourage the search engines from indexing the site. That means that the pages that you're going to be creating are not going to be indexed by the search engines and it's not going to be easy for anyone to just go and find or guess where the pages are going to be before their time releases their content. So then once you've done that, you're going to want to click Save Changes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to either your post or your page. So wherever you're going to be delivering your content, if you're going to be delivering it on posts or pages, you want to go to that area. So let's act as if you are going to be delivering all of your content by post. So we're going to go to the all post area. Now what we're going to be doing is if we're going to start delivering content on a once a month basis, we're going to have a naming convention as such. So we're going to name the first month's content. We're going to name the first month's content month one. And then we're going to hit publish. And we're also going to protect that by level one. So you'll notice there that we have the first three months completed. And that's all that we'll need in order to set the example of what you're going to be doing in order to drip content. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your permalinks and you're going to go into the settings area and you're going to go to the permalinks. Now, you're not going to want to use any of the date related permalink settings. You are going to want to use the post name. And we're going to click save changes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our posting area and we're going to take a look at all of our posts and now we're going to name each one of these uniquely. So we're going to click month one and we're going to call that something unique based on the content. For example, month one could be CPA marketing and what you're going to do is you're going to rename this link now also. And you want to consider doing something a little unique and you may want to append that with a number that only means something to you but that your customers will not be able to guess. And then you're going to do the same thing in the other post. We're going to click update and we're going to go back to the other post and do the same thing. Okay, so we've done the same thing for month two. We're going to click update. And we're going to do the same thing for month three. So now we've done the same with month three. We have the marketing statistical data post. So in order to get the people who are going to be signing up for their monthly content in an autoresponder, you're going to want them to go to the welcome to the membership page. And so we'll go back to there now. You'll recall that this is the page that people are going to be sent to as soon as they log in. So we're going to edit this page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put an opt-in form on this page so that people will know that they need to sign up in order to get their monthly content on time every month. So what we're going to do is we're going to click text and then we're going to get an opt-in code from our autoresponder. In this particular case, we're going to go to get response and get an autoresponder code. Okay, so hopefully you already know how to create a web form inside of your autoresponder. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to show you what to do with the web form. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the actual HTML form. And then we are going to save and publish it. And then we can get the JavaScript in order to put inside of our WordPress membership. We're going to copy it 
And then we're going to come back to this texting area. And then we're going to put in center. We're going to put in our code. And then we're going to put in the back center code. We're going to click update. And now we're going to view our membership area page. And you'll notice here now that the form is going to be the first thing that people are going to see. So you're going to want to write in some verbiage or perhaps even create a video telling people that what they'll need to do is to sign up for each month's content so that they'll get it on time and then they will be added to an email marketing list. Now what you'll need to do is you'll need to create messages on a monthly basis for people to receive. So in order to do that, you'll go to Create Autoresponder. And what will happen is that on day 30, they're going to get an email. Now you're going to have to create this message. And so you're going to create a new email for day 30. And you'll say something to the effect of get month two content. Once you have it, then you're going to go to the, you can save it actually, and then go to the next step. And then you'll come into a place where you're going to actually write your message, which you can start from scratch. Now you can put whatever you'd like to place inside of your message to your customer. The most important thing is that they get the link for the month two content. And so what we need to do now is we need to go back to our WordPress membership and get that link. So what we'll do now is go and get all of our posts. And we'll find month two. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the URL. And so what we can do here is we can actually right click this view button and copy the link address. And when we write our message, what's going to happen is we're going to make sure that at the very least, after everything else we've written, we'll deliver the link to them. And you can make it or personalize it. However you do it with your autoresponder, you'll just make sure that you've got this post so that they'll get that month's content. Now, they're going to get that on day 30. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click Next Step. And then you'll do the same thing for months 3 and months 4. So, for example, for month 3 or 60 days after, you're going to grab this link. Right, you're going to copy that link address. We will set up month four. And so each successive month, 30 days after, they're going to then get this content. OK, so however you save it inside of your autoresponder and you go to the next step, that is how you're going to set up the drip for your autoresponder to send out the actual content. Now, one other thing that you'll want to take note of is that you are going to want to change the name of your uncategorized uh, slug, especially because you're using the permalinks in the uncategorized area. And the reason that you do this is because you don't want to make it easy for your customers to guess where your URLs are going to be before they actually get the content. Now, it's probably going to never be a never be a factor, but you do want to make sure that you have it there so that once again, your customers will only get the content that they have actually paid for. Now, if you do use pages, this is one aspect of the process that you will not have to worry about are the categories. And this is the advantage of doing that process that we just went through on pages instead of posts. Once again, it is your choice as to how you're going to execute delivering your content to your members, but you can use pages instead of posts. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.